is, is integrity means wholeness and completeness. Uh, but the first definition given now is honesty and forthrightness. And that's what we tend to think of when we talk about integrity, isn't it? We'll say, that person has no integrity. And what do we mean by that? You know, we mean, well, we can't trust them. We, it's not, we can't trust them. They're not always honest. And so when we look at that, I, I love what uh, Dr. Gordon did with saying, really, integrity is about our wholeness with the divine, uh, that our completeness, and to remember that. And you know, when we do remember that, when we do know that, uh, and we do slip out of that knowing when we get into fear, don't we? But when we, when we really know, we know there's nothing to fear. And there's no need to ever be dishonest because there's nothing to fear. Because dishonesty comes out of fear. It comes out of, uh, well actually, I, I, many years ago, and I've told some of you this before, but I, in my master's degree in psychology, I went to polygraph school because I needed an instrument that would measure um, anxiety. And I couldn't, we didn't have one at, at FAU at the time, if you can imagine, FAU was so small then. And uh, so I went to polygraph school, because polygraph measures your fear of being caught in a lie. It, it can't measure your lying, it measures four physiological responses indicative of anxiety. And so, um, what I learned there, and they just said, everybody lies, everybody lies, lying is a form of self-protection. And of course it is, and, we, and it's also uh, a function of intelligence when we try to manipulate circumstances for our best possible, possible outcome. And our children figure it out and start doing it about age five. <laughs> just as their brain is developing, you know. They just get smart enough to know when you say, did you break that vase? They go, no, not me. It was my sibling did it. <laughs> Do you remember any of those discussions with your parents and siblings? Their parents could never figure out who did it because <laughs> not me, somebody else did it. Because it's a form of self-protection and we're always trying to manipulate circumstances for the best outcome for ourselves. And part of that's smart, except that you do that enough and people don't believe you, and people don't trust you. And so we have to tell our children the story about the crying wolf too many times. You know, and then when you're in need, people don't believe you. So we generally figure that out, and we gener generally figure out that it's to our best interest to be honest and forthright. Because, you know, you can be honest and not forthright. You can be, you can be saying the truth, but just withholding all the information, mm -hmm. and, and therefore also being misleading and, uh, and protecting yourself. So it's about being honest and forthright. And most of us figure out that it's for our best interest to do that because we want people to trust us. We want them to know that our word is good. And, and yet, there's still times, like I've been seeing a lot of things on uh, television about the Holocaust here recently. And I can tell you, if I were Jewish and living in Germany or Poland, and someone came up to me and said, are you Jewish? And I really was. I would say no, because I would be trying to save my life. So I think that there are times when we can understand when it's a form of saving your life or saving your family, when you would do that. But the danger is making too many exceptions. Because when, when it just becomes easier to say what will be the best answer for us, you know, we slip into a lack of integrity. We, nobody can believe us, nobody can trust us. And so it's that age-old problem of the end justifies the means. In other words, well, well, I'm saying it to protect myself or my family, therefore it's okay. What, whatever, whatever my goal is makes it, no matter what I do, that's all right. And of course we see that's, that's not okay. The end, does, end doesn't justify the means. You can't just do anything you want because what, what the final goal you want is good. You need to do every step along the way with integrity. And, and that is our constant challenge, I think, in life and uh, in, 
in being the best person we can be. But what I remind myself is when we know we're connected with the divine, when we know that our Father in Heaven wants nothing but the best for us, wants good for us, and we're one with that, and that we cannot die, and we cannot go to hell, then what is there to fear, really? So I think part of, of growing morally is <coughs> risking it not being the best circumstance for you, risking the consequences, and being honest anyway. Because in the long run, you feel better about yourself, and people can trust you. They can trust your answer. There was a time in my life when I was feeling I needed to uh, to tell stories to protect myself. And if I were in that situation, I probably would do it again. It was that necessary for self-protection. But I can tell you, when I got out of that situation, and it was a marriage, <laughs> I, I told myself, I will never put myself in that position again. That cost me too much to have to lie and cover up. I will never do that again. And it, it did. You could. It was like taking pieces of myself away from me and, and hiding from certain things. And uh, it, it, an emotional energy, it was too expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I, but it was necessary, I believed at the time. And, and so we get ourselves into those fixes sometimes. But it's wonderful when you can just take a deep breath. I am me. I am who I am. I'm not ever going to hide who I am or be what I'm not or pretend to be something else. It's not worth it. Because you rob yourself of your power. You know, you rob yourself of your power. Your power is knowing who you are. And people can like it or not like it. But that's who you are. And this is what you believe in. And this is what you're doing. And, and then you can draw on all the power of the universe. So this business of, of uh, it's not just for others, it's for you <laughs> that you want to find your wholeness and keep it and use that power. I worry sometimes today because, you know, we used to get, our children used to get this not only from their parents, but also from their, their, their places of worship. You know, they were learning morality and, and ethics in their, in their churches, in their synagogues, in their mosques, in their schools, in their home. And now, I, as I look around in the world, and particularly our news, our news reporting of what's going on in government and whatnot, you go, where's integrity? Where's, where's, where is the value in integrity and being honest? And how are our children supposed to learn it? It, it seems to all fall upon the parents now, many of whom are both are working and busy, because the, the schools say it shouldn't have to all fall on them, and they're right. And more and more of the families are not taking their children to, to religious organizations. So, and I do think it eventually shows up just from the parenting. Uh, I noticed in my own family, and I have a very large family, a uh, large Catholic family, you know, six kids in each, each uh, generation. And so, uh, as I watch, I notice that the kids, even though the kids can act out sometimes before they mature, and, and sometimes are brats, I notice an amazing, amazing thing happens. Once they're adult, all that good modeling they got from their parents kicks in, and they're wonderful human beings. So that gives me hope <laughs> when I look at our culture, because I, I look around and, and see um, what looks like a lack of integrity compared to when I was young and growing up. Uh, and I just wonder what's happening with our culture. And so I think it's all the more important for, for us as, as adults, as seniors, to know it, to model it, to remind it, but mostly just to model it, just to be that. And because when you are that, it's noticeable. It's noticeable to your grandchildren, to your, to your children, to other people. And, and they start doing it when the time is right. 
Uh, I don't think we can do anything about our politicians, you know, and that there, it's really the end justifies the means. I will say whatever I need to say mm -hmm. to spend this to be good for me and my party, you know, and it's, it's, it's really bad, bad modeling. So we don't look for them, <laughs> look to them to be our models of, of ethics and integrity. But it's just important to know how important it is for us and why. Again, I just want to repeat, you come into your power when you are truly you, when you know you're connected to all that is, and you don't have to hide any part of yourself. Mm. You are who you are. They can like it or lump it. And you're willing to risk a, a possible, not optimal outcome just for being who you are and saying what's so for you. Mm -hmm. So it is. It's so, so it is. So it is. So it is. So it is. Beautiful.